Good morning, everybody. This is Sunday, August 1st, and this is my first process live session talking about the upcoming doll hop. If I get too loud, please let me know in the chat. Um, I still have water on the ears. I've got medication to help with it, but I still can't tell what my volume is at. So oh, please let me know. Um, and excuse all the stuff in the background. So let's just talk about a general word about dolls because when I first heard Mary, which let me back up, Mary at the Mary LTA is our organizer. And she comes up with some fabulous ideas for the hops. Sometimes she gets input from those that are participating. Um, they happen on the second Friday of each month. And you'll see a hashtag time with the number four and then art. And that's how you find these hop videos. If you put that in a time for art, pick uh, August 13th is our next um hop day so put it on your calendar because you won't want to miss it because there will be all sorts of ideas coming in good morning mina good morning ruth um what i have done is i've pulled out some of my dolls at first mary had said art dolls so i did a bit of research on art dolls because dolls and art dolls are two very different things Art dolls are never meant to be played with. The two dolls you see at the back here, this girl here, I got her at the thrift store for like $5 and I redid her hair and I have a, a video on my channel on how to fix doll hair. Um, it's really easy to fix their hair. So many dolls get cast aside or thrown out were sent to the thrift store just because their hair got messed up by the little girl that played with them. But um, I can rescue them. So I rescued her. The only part is she's got some of her thread is showing here. I should have brought this curl forward a little, but it's fine. And I washed her clothes and she's like a doll now. Now this little girl here, she's mine from when I was a little girl. And I was obsessed with makeup when I was like four and five years old, because I guess my mom would come to visit me and she'd have makeup on. My grandmother never wore makeup. Um, so she's got makeup on, but I keep her because she's one of the last toys I have from my childhood. So you keep dolls, um, you, something speaks to you at a thrift store, you bring a doll home. See, I have this little girl here in case a niece comes to play or whatever but she's company for my treasured doll from my childhood. So we keep dolls for different reasons. Now, a lot of the rest of the dolls that you see on this table are gifts from people, gifts from viewers, gifts from friends, gifts from relatives. So we keep those dolls to carry that memory on. Um, recently, I received these little cute little gnomes from Sharon Lombard. I will treasure them always. I think the whole concept of a collection is for dolls in a way. There are collectible dolls, which they're only collectible if somebody finds them collectible. To me, a collection is something you put together. Oh, my ears. I'm sorry. Give me just a minute. <sighs> okay. It's bad. Um, we keep our dolls that we treasure because they speak to something within our soul. So that's why there's all these dolls here. Um, let me review some of these others. Uh, like I said, this one's from Sharon Lombard, the little family. A little, a little Greg at the back, which I think y'all saw that when I received it. This gnome here, um, Lucia sent me two. And I only brought the one out because, you know, I just wanted a representation. Um, others from viewers. Let's see. I think this was done in a swap. And this leans more toward art dolls. 
dolls can be anything, but art dolls are ones that aren't played with. So I'm leaning toward the art doll um, for my, my project that I will do for the hop. I'm going to lean more towards something like this, something that's an art doll. And um, this says Merry Christmas. I think this doll is actually meant to be an ornament, but my tree is so little that I, I use her as a doll and I keep her in my one of my uh, treasured places where I keep all my treasures. But she's just made of lace and different trims and things. I just wanted to share some of my dolls in case others are stumped. Um, she's got a bunch of different Christmas charms, like a star and a deer, and it says Merry Christmas and a jingle bell. So this, she would be considered more of an art doll, like the little gnomes over here. So we'll put her with the gnomes. I'm just going to set her down there. Now, this one is one I made, and she's not meant to be played with. She's an angel I made of nothing but paper leaves. So, and she's got a wooden spool right there. And she's on a styrofoam, you know, one of those little cones. And then I just glued paper wreaths, leaves, not wreaths, leaves, all the way up or in different sizes. And then created a little hat on the top with the leaves. And it's two layers of leaves, like one layer is white paper and one is a glitter paper. So I utilized my dies to create a very unique piece of art. It's She's more art than she is anything else. She's a doll, but she's also an ornament. But I would classify her as one you wouldn't play with, so I would call her an art doll. Now, some of these I got in different sewing groups or my quilting groups. Like I think this one is was made by someone in one of the quilting groups and she is made, she's also an angel and she is made out of quilts, old quilts. When you see an old quilt at like a store or an antique mall and it's already got a whole bunch of holes in it or, um, you know, big rips that you can't repair because the fabric is so fragile. You, I, There is a word for those quilts, but for the life of me, I cannot remember it this morning. Still brain fog. But again, she's not one that would be played with. She's just a display in a sewing room or a craft room or a quilt room. So she would be considered an art doll. And she's, um, she's two different quilts. Her wings are one quilt. You can see that that's very much different. And then her body is um, another quilt. And then she's got some lace and ribbon and a little emblem there. I don't know what that says. I don't know what it says, but the tiny, one of those little grapevine wreaths. She's got Spanish moss for hair, snaps for eyes. And then they just drew in the eyebrows, probably with a micron pen, because quilters are fond of using micron pens when they have to sign their quilts. And then her head and her body are just hand drawn out and stitched together. And then she's just roughly closed. I don't know, can you see the rough closing where she's been stuffed? So they basically drew a head shape with some shoulders and just that much of the body and then stuffed her. And then the quilt holds her up. So she stands. So she would be considered an art quilt as well. Not quilt, <laughs> art doll. All right, we talked about my big girls back here. This was a gift from an aunt that's no longer alive. And um, she is just made out of, she's got, a piece, piece of something hard in here for to give her a flat bottom. And I'm sure my aunt probably purchased her somewhere because she was not crafty, a uh, crafty person. But she was a gift to go in my sewing room because she's made out of a wooden ball. She's got a soft body with a hard piece in there to set her up. Then she's got some wooden beads and buttons. 
I'm just sharing all these for ideas for everybody that's participating in the hop that would like some add-ons to their dolls. And for anybody that's going to tag along in the hop that would like some additional ideas. So she's got her little basket full of fake flowers. They're a little dusty because I've had her for years. But I sit her on the shelf and then I can make her cross her legs like that. So she's very ladylike. So I'm going to sit her back over here on my little doll's lap. Maybe. Maybe sit her on the floor because she does better on the floor. All right. Now I've got some little, some people call them prayer dolls. Some people call them, um, I think they're called uh, trouble dolls that you would speak to in the evening to give all your troubles to the little dolls so you could go to bed peacefully. And these are just um, little dolls. Her hair is coming off because she, she needs a fix. But the lady that made this one is no longer with us. She passed away recently of cancer. So I, again, again I will always treasure this. And she made a very unique little doll in that she used the fabric as the face and everything. So it's a little cat doll. And it's just a little cat. has been cut out, but she cut it in a way that it's part of the doll. And I thought that was a neat idea. And again, this is not meant to be played with. You can see it was a cat. She's got a cat on her back as well. Because she knew I loved cats. I'll do. Hi, Janet. So I'm going to fix her hair. I might uh, put a little glue on there or something and glue her hair down. But we did uh, this little swap. And I think we did it in groups of four. So we would make four dolls and three would get mailed out and you would keep one. So I have two more to show you that was in this pop. So there's a little cat doll. Again, really more art doll. And they just, and these little prayer or woe dolls, they can be in any shape. They don't even have to actually look like a doll. Um, I mean, she's got arms and legs and a head, but she has no face. She's got a beautiful hat. And she's got beaded arms, or these could be, I don't know, she's swinging some of those things that whistles. I don't know. But she's another one of, version of the little prayer or woe doll. There's another word for, for them, but I, like I said, I can't remember. And then here's the last one. And you can see, this is just a little something that you could give your woes to so you could sleep and rest peacefully. And she doesn't look anything like a doll. She's got kind of a female form in her. And she's decorated the edge up. So see, the dolls don't even have to truly look like dolls for this particular reason, um, for being a prayer doll or a woe doll. It can just be something you give your problems to. So those were three that were done in, this, in a swap. Now, Mary talks about the Matryoshka dolls. I have a friend or an acquaintance that she is a Russian lady and she paints Matryoshka. And I will put a link to her website. Um, she sells them and she makes all kind of unique dolls. But my sister went to Russia when she was 17 with her um, scholastic group. Um, you know, uh, the ones that get all the high grades and stuff, they get to go on a special trip. That was my sister, Robin. And she went, and um, actually she didn't bring me that. My my Russian um, sister-in-law brought me that Matryoshka doll. My sister, Robin, brought me a spoon, which I will show since I mentioned Robin. Hang on. That goes to the fact that I am very foggy yet. This is what Robin brought me. Isn't it beautiful? And uh, you would never use this in real soup here. I, I keep this the treasured memory of my sister's trip to Russia. So then years later, my brother 
marries a Russian girl um, through, you know, Russian bride, male, male bride, male order bride. And we love her dearly. But she brought me this one year um, when they had gone for a trip back. They go, they either go to Russia or her family comes from Russia to visit. And she always, they bring little things. So she brought this one year and I don't know that I can even get her open anymore. She's been sitting closed. There we go. And these are mass produced, you know, but if you made one yourself, you could make it very unique. And there's one more. This is a true Matryoshka doll. I don't think this one opens. That's the smallest one. What these dolls represent, let me put you down. The dolls represent the generations. Um, so the youngest goes into that one and then Grandmother, great grandmother, it talks about the heritage. And then you can put them back together. And so the matriarchs are very important in their society. I'll put these back together. Maybe. I didn't get her quite right. Hang on. You can tell if you don't have it quite right because the flower won't match up. So when you see these dolls, you have to think that someone was probably thinking about their family as they painted them. And the word bambushka just means like an older person. So it's not just your grand. Um, Direct related grandmother is a bambushka. It's any older lady is a bambushka. Because of my silver hair, I would probably be called a bambushka. But those are Matryoshka dolls. And it can also represent the different levels of peace within you. There's all kinds of stuff about them. You might want to look them up. And the last doll in the middle was made in a national quiltings group. We did a doll swap. And I was working at Joann's at the time. So the doll that I mailed to her in the UK was me. It represented me. And this doll represented her. And she was featured in Quilting Arts Magazine. And so I thought I would share her with you all as well. Now, she is a true what they call art doll in that, let me, I'm going to go over some just general information about art dolls shortly. Let me move these back here. So, okay, this wasn't part of it. I just got this teddy bear and added it. But she made the little doll and then she printed off the magazine she was featured in on paper and she folded it up so her doll could have a magazine. Um let me see if I can see her name. I don't see it. No, this was from 2006, I think. So I've had her a while. And look at this. She even gave her knitting and she had knitted all this with these toothpicks. Now that to me is talent. So you can add little attributes to your doll that's talk about you and they don't even, you don't even have to say it. You can, they, people can look and say, oh, she must have enjoyed this magazine or been featured in it. She enjoys knitting and she enjoys little dolls. But her dolly has beautiful painted features. She knitted this sweater for her. She's got a a beautiful skirt. She doesn't have a full on dress. So the sweater is important to stay on or she'll be cold. But she painted her face. I love this doll hair she used. It looks like it's just some wool. Um, what do they call it? I can't remember. 
So it's like the wool that you would buy to felt with. That's what this looks like. And she gave her, um, like she's got green tights. She's wearing a petticoat under there. Let's see. Well, those are probably stockings because they stop so far up. But anyway, and I think she even made her. Yeah, she's even got little panties on. And I thought that was so cute. And my little doll looked just like a, a Joanne employee of that time with the green apron. So this, and I, I wish I'd written her name inside this magazine. I don't remember her name now. So those are the dolls that I had that I wanted to share with you. And uh, let's, I'm just going to talk just a little bit about the history of art dolls. Roving. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I got a lot of this information is off from Wikipedia or the NIADA, the National Institute of American Doll Artists. So I'm sharing information that you can go out and look for further information about. So the history of art dolls comes from Wikipedia. It says art dolls are objects of art rather than children's toys created in a wide variety of styles and media and may include both pre-manufactured parts or wholly original work. So I have some dolls, arms and legs and heads that I could utilize in my art doll by just maybe doing art on her body, because I would have to have a body, and her clothing, and I could call her an art doll. But I would need to make the components, the head and the body parts, the legs and the arms, look not so realistic. Um, I have seen some art dolls where they left it, but if we'll learn more here in just a minute. Let's go on with this. The NIADA, National Institute of American Art Dolls, was officially founded in May 1963 at the Watts Bar Resort near Ozone, Tennessee, by Helen Bullard and her co-founders, Gertrude Florian, Madge Head, and Fawn Zeller. More info about NIADA can be found at niada.org slash N-I-A-D-A history backslash. Terms you would hear on that website are O-O-A-K. O-O-A-K stands for one of a kind. A-K art dolls should be an original doll made from start to finish by the individual artist from conception through design, sculpting and finishing the piece that will not be reproduced again. Now that came from a blog, the Etsy blog, that's about art dolls. I'll put the link to that in the description below. Media that you can use to create your art dolls can be very wide variety. You can use clays, whether they're high fire to air dry, and epoxy clays and some porcelain dolls if made as a one of a kind art doll. So in other words, what they're saying is you can use clay, but every single doll you make with clay needs to have different features or different shapes, or it has to be one of a kind to be considered an art doll. Polymer clays, air dry clays, two part epoxy, paper clays, and paper mache can also be used. So you can use your crafting clay as long as it's a one of a kind. The whole art doll thing is they need to be one of a kind, an original. You would never see an art doll mass produced is what the NIADA says. Now you can do soft sculpture like my lady from England here. And you can use foam, batting, fabric, and nylon. Includes needle felting. These pieces must have detailed, realistic details achieved through needle sculpting. And that's where Sharon, these are realistic gnomes, are they not? Each one is individual, got their own individual features. And I, it's hilarious that even the child has a beard, but okay, Sharon. Um, <laughs> 
So these would be considered a one of a kind if Sharon didn't make any more that looked exactly like this. All right. Then you get into assemblage dolls. That's when you're cobbling together a variety of items from old doll parts to kitchen utensils. Just about any item can be used in assemblage. It's a great way to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So if you've got like a glass jar that's headed to the recycling bin, you can utilize it as a body for a doll. Any other part of the body of a doll, you can maybe do just a big head and use the, the jar as the head and put hair on it and you know decorate it. So there's so many things that you could save from the dump just by turning into art dolls. Then there's altered dolls. Artists use commercial dolls like Barbie, uh, Bratz, and um, what are some of the others? I don't know, I'm not up to, to that. But anyway, you can take any commercially made doll, then you sculpt over it, not just repainting. It's not stripping the paint off and repainting them. It's sculpting over the top of them in some way, removing or replacing body parts recostuming and just generally remake the doll. So like if you wanted to cut the face off the Barbie and then put a clay molded face on top of the head base, you could do that. You could put the clay over the doll's face and not even have to remove any of Barbie. You just want to make it look so it doesn't look anything like a doll. And this um, eBay article I think it was, is it eBay or Etsy? It was an Etsy article that I'm going to link below. Has examples of what they mean by altering it to the point it's almost unrecognizable as the commercial doll. That's what they want you to do. So what is an art doll? It is an original work of art in a doll form used as more traditional art is to express something the artist wants to express. So if you want to express anger, you could express it in a doll and that would be an ugly doll, but you could express it. Um, if you have a political view that you want to express, you could express it. But I will say you won't see that in Mary's Hop because she has asked that we do not get political or religious within our hops to make it more open to everyone. So don't worry about that if you think, you know, that's going to be a part of the hop. I have a list of resources. Um, I will put them in the description box below. And this is my part one of my pre-process. And I will do some more videos before the 13th of my process of how I am creating my doll. So like I said, I am hoping to do a more art doll related not just a dolly dolly or a paper doll or anything. I want to lean toward that one of a kind art doll situation. So I'm going to see if I can get Scott to help me create a base today because I'm thinking of using paper mache. So we'll see how I do and what I come up with. So thank you all for coming and staying. Um, I must have bored a lot of people because <laughs> I'm down to nine in here, but that's okay. <laughs> it's not for everybody. And this is part of the hop. Mary, a link to this video. And I hope you all will come and join us in the hop on August 13th. It's a Friday the 13th. It starts in the morning with Mary starting us off. And then we take a midday break. And then we start back up in the evening. I will be one of the evening participants but there are so many wonderful people involved in this hop and we have new members joining us for the next hop. And I think this is gonna be a lot of fun and I hope to see a lot of you in the chats and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye guys.